but today I'm gonna be doing my February wrap up. Look, I know this is late, but I'm not gonna apologize. I had no time to film at all. So anyways, let's get on with the video. So in February, I was so busy. I was so busy and stressed out, yet somehow I managed to read seven books. How did that happen? I don't know. Well, two of them were rereads, so that's probably why. I'm so proud of myself. I reread two books in February. That literally never happens. I am so excited to be rereading more books. I'm going to try my hardest to read more books. Reread more books because I never reread books. The first book I read in February was Rebel Magisters by Shauna Swenson. So this is the second book in the Rebel Mag Mechanics series. And what I love about these books is that they're so unique. I've never read anything like them before. Yes, they're alternate history novels and they take place in a world where the American Revolution never happened because the British had magical abilities. So it feels historical, but it also doesn't feel historical. And I just, I love it. They're so unique. I'm not going to go super in detail on all of my thoughts on Rebel Magisters because I did do a Goodreads review. I'll leave it down below. If you're looking for a book that feels historical, but not quite, and has an amazing adventure and wonderful characters, definitely check out this series. It's amazing. Next, I read P.S. I Light Like Casey Was. It's not one of my favorites of all time. I just, Casey West is the queen of adorable, swoony contemporaries. And this one is the best. I've read all of Casey West's books and this is now my favorite. I love it so much. It's about a girl named Lily and during chemistry class, she writes notes on one of her desks and somebody responds to her in a different chemistry period and then they start exchanging letters and through this letter exchange, she starts to fall for that person. And it's just, it's so cute. And she's also an aspiring songwriter. So throughout the book, we get to see like the lyrics that she writes and they're so simple and poetic and I loved them. I think my favorite thing about this book is how, yes, the main plot revolves around the pen pal romance and the cutesy relationship, but her other relationships never were overshadowed by the romance. Like the friendship that she had and her family, they all had equal importance in her life. Like a lot of times in YA, especially in contemporary, the romance starts and just overshadows everything that did not happen in this book. And all of them were equally balanced and it just made me so happy. Had wonderful themes of family, friendship, and music. And I just, I love it. If you're looking for an adorable contemporary, check this one out. You will not regret it. It's absolutely adorable and I loved it so much. And I need to get my own copy because I listened to the audiobook for both of my rereads. Yeah, I actually reread this book. I listened to the audiobook and then after I finished listening to the audiobook for the first time, I went back to chapter one and started right over again and went straight through. And I'm so happy I did that because I picked up on so many things I didn't pick up on the first time I read it. The next book I read is Day Zero by Chrisley Cole. This is Dead of Winter, not Day Zero, but this is a book of the Arcana Chronicles. So I thought I'd hold it up since I don't own Day Zero. But anyways, Day Zero is a companion novel. It has a bunch of short stories about all of the characters in the series and I really loved it. Yes, it's not even like 200 pages. It's so short. Day Zero is like this tiny little thing. It's basically a novella, but I loved reading it. And a lot of the characters um, that had short stories, we actually never met in the original series. I don't want to say too much about the series because I feel like you should go in blind. The series centers around a game and all of the players in the game have a short story in day zero. And a lot of the, some of the players we actually never got to see in the series because they were killed really early on in the game before the main character got to meet them. And I'm so sad that they weren't in the series because some of the characters that got killed off were so cool. I'm like, um, you're awesome. Why can't you be in the series? But no, they're dead already. Was this book necessary to the series? No, not really, but it was so much fun learning about all these characters that I, we never even got to learn about, and we got so much insight on all of the characters that we know and love. I just, I love this series so much. The Arcana Chronicles is one of my favorites of all time, and I will rave about it forever. I could talk about it for hours. I love this series. I love the characters. It's one of my all-time favorites, and I just, I love it. 
do yourself a favor and read the first book, Poison Princess. It's so good, so good. Next book I read is Listen Slowly by Tanha Alai. So I actually read this for the diversity bingo. This fulfills the challenge of reading a book that takes place in a non-Western setting because it takes place in Vietnam and it's also an own voices novel and the main character is Vietnamese. This is a middle grade novel. So the main character was like 12 and she was annoying and whiny sometimes, but for the most part, I really, really loved this book. I learned so much about Vietnam, about its culture, its language, the country, the people. I loved it. It was just such an amazing learning experience and I'm so fascinated by Vietnam now. Like I really want to go. I also recommend checking out the audiobook if you are not Vietnamese and know Vietnamese because there's a lot of Vietnamese words in the book and if you don't know how to say them or read them, you kind of like look at them like what? I listened to the audiobook and I think the narrator was Vietnamese because she said all of the words like perfectly. So yeah, definitely recommend the audiobook. I'm pretty sure I gave this book four stars because the character was kind of whiny. I love the really strong themes of family and accepting your culture and who you are. Just it was wonderful. If you're looking for a really cute read to teach you about Vietnam and the most amazing fun way, definitely check it out. Definitely check out this book, especially the audiobook. It was wonderful. Also, if you're looking for a really diverse read because it's so diverse, I don't even think there's a white person in it. There might be one one person. Okay. Now on to the next book I read. That is Fireside by Casey West. So despite really loving this book and having read it twice, I have a lot of problems with it. So the first time I read it, I absolutely loved it and I gave it four stars. The second time I reread it, I gave it three stars and I picked up on a lot of problematic aspects of this book. And I'm kind of sad that I reread the book because now I don't like it as much and it makes me sad because the first time I read it, I loved it so much. It's about it's another cute contemporary romance written by Casey West, and but this time they get stuck in a library over a long weekend, and it's just so adorable. They're not in the library for the whole book, but the parts that were in the library were my favorite of the book. I love those parts. But then after the library is when all the pro start all of the problematic things started, and I was just like, why? Well, of course, everybody in this book is white and straight. There's no diversity in it at all. There's one person of color, and that person of color is what I've seen people call as the token person of color, where they're basically just there so the author can be like, oh, look, there's one person of color. My book is diverse. No, it's not. Not to mention this person literally had two lines and they were a one dimensional character. Like they could have easily been white or not even been there at all and it would have been fine. So yeah, and another thing that really bothered me about this book is the main character has anxiety and some people were talking about how the representation was really bad and unrealistic and I don't agree with that. I definitely think people experience anxiety in a bunch of different ways and she, experiences panic attacks and as someone who experiences panic attacks I think it was spot on the way it was described and the way she dealt with them the way she felt in the situation I just I felt like it was very realistic I can't say much about the other parts where she experienced anxiety but the one thing that really bothered me about her anxiety is the fact that throughout the whole book she just kept saying oh I have an anxiety disorder um honey which one there's so many PTSD there's social anxiety there's generalized anxiety there's phobias there's OCD there's so many different anxiety disorders like which one do you have she just says oh I have an anxiety disorder and then there's one part in the book which really pissed me off because she's like oh I read a a lot of books about psychology because of my condition. Oh really? You read so many books about psychology yet you don't know what type of disorder you have? How does that make any sense? Besides the main couple, everybody else was one dimensional which really bothered me. You know despite all this I still really loved it especially the library parts. They were my favorites. I ended up lowering my rating to three stars after rereading it. Yeah. I definitely still recommend this book if you're looking for a really cute quick read because it really was that. That's all! Those are all the books that I read in February. Technically I read seven books because Goodreads introduced the rereading option. Oh my god, I'm so happy about the rereading option. When I was in the middle of reading P.S. I Like You for the first time and I already knew I was gonna reread it, they introduced the option right in the middle that I was like, this is perfect! I'm about to reread a book and now the rereading option is a thing? I'm so happy. Okay, so I had gone... I mean, I had found a way around still counting books I reread for my challenge by using different editions. 
So I mean, I still counted books towards my challenge, but I'm just happy it's official now. But anyways, that's all. Comment down below what was your favorite book you read in February. Yeah, I know we're like almost done with March, but <laughs> what was your favorite? Um, obviously my favorite was P.S. I Like You by Casey West. Oh my god, that book. I need to get my own copy and read it a third time because it was phenomenal. And I also really loved reading Day Zero by Cressley Cole because honestly, I just love the series so much that I will just read anything and I'll about that series and I will still probably love it. My social media links are all down below. My Twitter, my Bookstagram, my Goodreads. Ah!